Hi there, this is Joanne from TrueAuthenticPower.com from Tapping.me, and I'm also the creator of the program Catapulting to Confidence. I want to talk today about things that you are used to that can be detrimental to you. And what do I mean by that? When we get used to living a certain way from our upbringing, from what we saw, especially in the earliest ages, we continue those patterns unconsciously, automatically, and they can be running our lives in a way that is not beneficial. When you look at different family systems, a lot of families recreate the same patterns over and over and over again. It's called generational downloads. What your great-grandparents learned, they passed on to your grandparents. You get the idea. They pass on through generations. And when those are positive or life-affirming or healthy, that's a really good thing. But what about when they're detrimental or not so healthy or they're really soul-killing or spirit-killing, but they're learned, it seems normal, that's what my family does, that's what we do, that's how it goes, and it's not necessarily the case. So I want to give you some examples. My family, in particular, grew up with an argumentative kind of arguing kind of tendency. Let's argue about it. It's not really what I ever wanted to do. It's probably not ever really what they wanted to do, but nobody learned how to do it differently. So it was passed on. Well, guess what? You know, it keeps going and going and going until somebody says, hey, there's a cycle here that's not necessarily so healthy. Now, my sweetheart Ray's family was very much an avoiding kind of family. So they would laugh through everything. They would play games through everything. And while that's feeling better than arguing, avoiding isn't so good either because it doesn't bring to resolution, neither does fighting. So let's look at some other things that could be going on that parents do the best that they can trying to think they're helping when they're not. And you don't necessarily know that until you get out of your own environment into an environment with other people, into diversity kind of things. And I'm not talking diversity as in what it means on a global societal level. I'm just talking when you are out of your niche, when you are out of what you're used to, when you experience other families, how other people do things. Because we get so locked into the patterns that have become part of our family, our routine, what we learned, that we don't even know there's another way. So how can this apply beyond your families? Well, just go to YouTube, to entrepreneur commercials, to this is how you're supposed to do it. This is the push, the force, the you have to be in the grind. You have to do it a certain way. It looks a certain way. Yeah, they may be mega successful, but does their lifestyle feel right to you? Does it fit you? Does it feel peaceful, joyful, enlivening? Or does it seem oh, burnout because you have to push and force and be on it all the time and those beliefs of what you saw, what you get used to, who you believe, it's time to start evaluating some of those things and see what is it I like? What is it I want? Yes, you can learn from other people. You can learn from gurus. You can learn from parents and family members, coaches, mentors, even the ones from earlier ages before the age of seven. My point is though, you can get so locked into thinking that everybody else has the solution thinking that how we've always done it is the right way to do it, thinking that if I listen to that guru and how they do it, then it'll work the same way for me. I want you to start reevaluating what it is you're doing. I recently worked with someone who had a trauma at the age of seven. Well, somebody actually passed away. And it so frazzled them as a child, as a kid, that their energy started running amok. And the parents' idea of how to cope with that was to keep them busy, keep them busy, keep them busy. So they are now in a pattern as an adult where they are being so busy all the time that they're exhausted. Their body symptoms are screaming at them. They've got a, a slew of things that are driving the bus and they are throwing everything in the kitchen at this, you know, fix. And they're not getting to the source of what's underneath. So 
when I'm talking about being used to it can be detrimental. If what you grew up with was the way your family did it, you know, that's the way it was. And you can change the energy of the effect of that on you. But my point is, is it right for you now? Because a lot of things that we do to cope as kids, hide, stay out of trouble, take things, drugs, you know, things that will help us cope, try to outrun our energy in multiple ways. That's what we did back then. Do you want to keep doing that forever? Because that's also what addiction is about. I did what I had to do to cope with the pain that was underneath. Well, if you don't clear up the pain that's underneath or the pattern that's been ingrained that might not fit you, you have to keep using the coping mechanism. Do you catch what I'm trying to say here? There are detrimental things that we learn. I learned how to argue. Yeah, I can be really good at it and I can stand my ground. In fact, when I was in college, I took vocational testing to see what lined up with me. And guess what? A lawyer did. Well, what does a lawyer do? They fight for the side of their client. It may be a skill I have, but that doesn't mean I necessarily want to do that or want to be in those shoes or want to keep fighting. So I had to reevaluate of, wait a minute, that never brought us to a resolution that was comfortable. So yeah, that's a behavior we did, but did it feel good? No, not just a little no, no, (laughs) a lot, no. I didn't know that that wasn't normal. That's how my family did it. That's what the extended family seems to do. I didn't know it at the time, but I know it now. Patterns are generational downloads. They get passed from way back because if you don't know how to do it in a different way, you keep doing it the only way that you know how. It's not bad or blaming someone for doing it the incorrect way, but keep in mind, people did not have tools and internet and other ways of knowing what was possible. So they went along with what they were taught. That's the only thing they knew. And there weren't necessarily a lot of options to find out different ways of coping with things, different ways of dealing with life. What is underneath all that driving energy? So, I, you know, it seems like an addiction. I don't know who's putting out all the content that sounds the same for entrepreneur stuff especially, but it's all push and drive and you want more and be the best in the time. Yeah, you want to be the best, but you want to be the best because you want to be the best of what you're capable of. Not necessarily to be running amok with such energy that you can't take a breath, that you can't enjoy the journey, that you can't enjoy some of the benefits. I'm just suggesting to you to take a look at patterns that you've been doing a long time. And here's where it gets a little tricky. Sometimes when we're in the patterns, we have no idea there are patterns that are working against us. It's not until you get out of it or your body starts screaming with symptoms. Those body screaming symptoms are not about what you think. They're telling you that something is out of balance. They're saying that something isn't right. And there's a driver underneath that that is trying to get your attention. But what people have learned to do is just look the other way, blow past it, push through it. And, you know, I would suggest to you that you can't outrun your energy. Somewhere along the line, it will start manifesting into unwanted symptoms, unwanted patterns, unwanted relationships, or just being exhausted You can't outrun your energy of what's driving underneath the bus. You can for a while, but take a look at the people who talk about, and I'm referring especially to men, that talk about the push, the force, that have to fight for your position, that have to, you know, all that harsh forcing energy. Look at them as a whole. Who dies younger? And why do you think that is? There's so much pushing. There's so much force and that's what men learn to do. Women learn their own set of issues of how to hide and how to be less than and there are so many patterns and I'm not saying that applies to every man and woman, the description that I just gave. I'm not saying that applies to everybody, but I'm just saying patterns are learned and until you start saying, does this fit me? Is this really how I want it to be? Is this really how I want it to look? 
why can't you have success and have it be fun and easier than you expect? Because programming tells you, no, that's not the way it is. That gurus tell you, no, that has to be is with the push and the force and the hard work and the 24-7. Yeah, well, you're doing all that because isn't there a payoff that you're looking for there? Not just to be the top dog, but to enjoy your life? Isn't that part of your scenario? Or maybe it isn't. Reevaluate what you've been doing. Reevaluate how you've been doing it. Take a look at, is this really working? Do I feel good about my life? Does it suit me? The way certain people tell you to do things, does it fit for you? Does it feel right to you? Is it like an outfit that feels good when you put it on? Or is it yeah, but this is what you have to do. This is what all the experts say. Mm. You know, experts can be wrong. Experts can do things that feel right to them and not right to you. Everything that I talk about is not just about how to get through it, but look at what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's so important and not enough people talk about there are drivers underneath that are forcing those patterns to be in place. If you are used to being bullied and beaten up, through words or domination or somebody controlling you, guess what? You're going to find those kind of people to mentor you because you're used to it. If you're used to people who are hiding and used to being less than, guess what? You're going to gravitate to those kind of people unless you start paying attention to what is it I want? How might it feel good to me? And start using your energy to call that in. Now, how do you call that in? I use tapping and energy frequency tools. And what that does is it can start dissolving some of the unwanted patterns and the roots of that that have you in a loop that keep you running. You can also use it to program in what you want. And that might mean a softer way to deal with things. That might mean coming to resolution in an easy way. If you don't believe you can come to resolution or your goals or your dreams or your desires in an easy way, you might want to take a look at that belief. Everything that we learned as children, we learned in a way that kept us safe. Our coping mechanisms, how we reacted to people, what we said and did with people, how we ran away from problems, how we hid, how we forced through, how we got into trouble, how anything happened is really a reflection of what's going on in your energy. So wouldn't it be a good idea to start paying attention to some of that stuff? Does this fit me? Does it feel right to me? I don't care who necessarily tells you how to do what, when, and how. Does it feel right to you? Does it make sense? Does it land for you? Do you want something different other than the people you've been looking at, following, being mentored by? What I'm saying may not land for you at all. You may think I'm, you know, off the wall. Okay, then that's what you think and feel. I'm just saying what you've gotten used to might be working against you. That's my only point of this audio and take it or leave it, but I think it's an important conversation to have. You're not going to outrun your energy. Somewhere along the line, it will catch up. May not be now, maybe later, maybe when you're so frazzled that your system says, you know, uncle, uncle, I give up and you drop dead. I, I don't know. I'm just saying there are ways that can enhance your life. If you start looking at things a little bit, does this feel right? Does it fit me? Do I like it this way? Or is it just so programmed to be normal that I accept it as that? I had to do that. I know a lot of other people that have to do that. And honestly, when people talk about the midlife crisis, that's usually when it starts coming to light. What the heck have I been doing? Where am I? I'm not anywhere I thought I would be or I'm where I thought I would be, but it doesn't feel like what I thought it would feel like. Why not evaluate sooner? Not wait for a crisis. Although I will say that crises have a way of giving a wake-up call. But then you've got the crisis and maybe even some health issues that maybe you could have done a little bit differently. A lot of things that happen for us are a wake-up call that seem detrimental, like body symptoms that are out of whack. Now, I do have some sleep videos that people use, and in a pinch, those initial videos can be very helpful. But wouldn't you want to get to what's really driving the bus underneath that is causing that so you don't have to keep doing that fix all the time? I don't know. Just some things to think about.
if they land for you, that's great. Do some exploration with what am I doing and why am I doing it? If they don't land for you, move on and find the things that do. But I hope it brings some awareness to what your energy might be speaking through symptoms, through things that aren't working, through the detrimental, you know, what am I doing feelings? Because there's more to the story. And when you start to unhook from that, life becomes a lot more peaceful, becomes a lot more what you want it to feel like, and it's a good thing. And if this is enlightening for you or something that you're learning about energy, how it works, how it's playing you, how it's working against you, how it can work for you, if that's new to you or you like these kind of explanations, subscribe. Tell other people about these things because I see so many people running amok. And I did for a long time too until until I got stopped dead in my tracks. And believe me, I did. And it was painful and it was hard because everything started falling apart. So I kind of know how that feels and um, it's not such a happy time. <laughs> so if you can lessen that or soften it so that you don't have to be slammed to wake up, it's a good thing. Until our paths cross again next time. Bye-bye for now.